the Battle of Selinus, which took place in the spring of 409 BC, is the opening battle of the so-called Second Sicilian War. The ten-day-long siege and battle was fought in Sicily between the Carthaginian forces under Hannibal Mago and the Dorian Greeks of Selinus. The city of Selinus had defeated the Elymean city of Segesta in 415 BC, an event that led to the Athenian invasion of Sicily in 415 BC and ended in the defeat of Athenian forces in 413 BC. When Selinus again worsted Segesta in 411 BC, Carthage, responding to the appeal of Segesta, had besieged and sacked Selinus after the Carthaginian offer of negotiations had been refused refused by the Greeks. This was the first step towards Hannibal's campaign to avenge the Carthaginian defeat at the First Battle of Himera in 480 BC. The city of Selinus was later rebuilt but never regained her former status. Background The island of Sicily contained the Elymians. Sicans and the Siculi living in respective communities before the Phoenicians had started their colonization of Sicily after 800 BC. The Phoenicians had initially planted trading posts all over the coast of Sicily, but never penetrated far inland and ultimately withdrew without resistance to the western half of the island with the arrival of the Greek colonists. After 750 BC, the Ionian Greeks took the lead in colonizing Sicily among Greeks when they planted Axos in 735 BC, and spread north and west along the island coast until the city of Himera was founded in c. 648 BC, bordering the Phoenician territory of Solentum. The Dorian Greeks founded Syracuse in 734 BC and spread south then west along the coastline until Selinus was founded around 654 BC, bordering the Phoenician territory of Motia. While the Ionian Greeks on the whole had friendly relations with the native Sicilians in the Phoenicians, the Dorian Greeks were comparably more aggressive pushing inland at the expense of the natives to expand the Greek domain. Conflicts among the Greeks' colonies and between the natives and Greeks erupted, but these were localized mostly affairs without any decisive results or intervention from non-Sicilian powers. The Phoenicians and Carthaginians traded with everyone in Sicily and on the whole all the island colonies prospered. This prosperity caused some of the Greek cities to start to expand their territories again, ultimately leading to the events known as Sicilian Wars. Carthaginian hegemony The Phoenicians in Sicily had not resisted the initial Greek expansion by force of arms, but this state of affairs changed when the Greeks began to encroach on their territory in western Sicily. Phoenicians had aided the Alimians against the Dorian Greeks of Selinus in 580 BC, when a Greek colonization attempt of the area around future Lilybium was defeated by their joint effort. Nothing is known of the role of Carthage in this episode, and it is possible that the Sicilian Phoenicians were not a part of the Punic hegemony at that time. The Carthaginian king Malchus is said to have conquered all Sicily, and sent booty captured to Tyre some time after this event. This probably implies that Carthage had incorporated the Phoenician colonies of Motia, Panormus and Solus into the Punic hegemony led by Carthage, which had begun to resist Greek encroachment of western Mediterranean after 600 BC. The growth of Selinus and Himera during the period Malchus was active in Sicily indicates that Carthaginians were not in conflict with the Sicilian Greeks at that time. However, Carthage counted the expedition of Spartan Doyers in 510 BC and the Greeks were defeated near Eryx, a clear indication that Carthage now held sway over the Phoenician interests in Sicily. A war followed this event, which eventually led to Carthage destroying the city of Heracle Manoa. The year this even took place is not known, but Carthage did not intervene in Sicily again until 480 BC after Heracle had been destroyed. Carthage granted the Sicilian Phoenicians local autonomy, keeping control of their foreign policy, extracting some sort of tribute in exchange for military aid. The Elymians, dominated by Sigasta, were given allied status, protecting them from further hostility of Selenus.
which had also allied herself with Carthage because of the threat presented by the rise of Acragus. Greek tyrants two Greeks from Gela, Cleander and Gelo, had been involved in the war that eventually destroyed Heracleminoa. An appeal for aid to avenge the death of Doryas was ignored by mainland Greece, even by Leonidas of Sparta, the brother of Doryas and who later would win immortal fame at a narrow pass called Gates of Fire in 480 BC. While Carthage was engaged in Sardinia, the Greek colonies in Sicily had fallen under the rule of tyrants. Some of these tyrants, notably those ruling Gela, Acragus and Regium, sought to expand their dominion at the expense of native Sicilians and other Greek cities during 505-480 BC, with the Dorian city of Gela being the most successful. Tyrants like Cleander and Hippocrates successfully took over Sicel and Ionian Greek territory, and by 490 BC, Zankel, Leontini, Catanar and Naxos had fallen under gel and control. Syracuse had managed to survive the attempts of Hippocrates with help from Corinth, but Jello, successor of Hippocrates, captured Syracuse and made the city his capital. Acragus expanded her territory against the Sicans and Sicils, and under Theron, allied with Jello to forestall any future conflicts between the neighboring powers. The Ionian Greeks, having lost Naxos and Catanar to Gelan aggression, responded by creating an alliance between tyrants of Himera and Region. Anaxalas, tyrant of Region, who had managed to detach Zankel from clutches of Syracuse by 485 BC, married the daughter of Terralus, tyrant of Himera. Both Himera and Region also made treaties with Carthage. Terralus went further, becoming guest friend of Hamakar Mago, king of Carthage. Thus three powers were delicately balanced in Sicily by 483 BC. Carthage kept the peace between Elymians and Selenus, while the Ionian Greeks in the north faced the Dorians Greeks from the south, led by Syracuse and Acragus. This situation changed when Theron, with support from citizens of Himera, deposed Terralus and took over that city in 483 BC. Carthage intervened at the instigation of Anaxilis, and the Sicilian Greeks under the tyrants Gelo and Theron crushed the Punic expedition of 480 BC in the First Battle of Himera. The Carthaginian domain in western Sicily was untouched by this defeat. Carthage had refrained from intervening in Sicilian affairs for 70 years, while expanding her hegemony in Africa, Sardinia and Spain. This defeat of an external power brought prosperity but not peace for Sicilians, Greeks and non-Greeks alike. The political landscape in Sicily during those years changed as some of the Greek tyrants were replaced by democracy and oligarchy. The influence of Syracuse shrank in Sicily and infighting between the Greek cities flared up. Athens had sent fleets to Sicily in 427, 425 and 424 BC to intervene in these conflicts which ultimately caused Hermocrates of Syracuse to request all Sicilian Greek cities to remain at peace at the Congress of Gela in 424 BC. Peace between Greeks and the natives of Sicily was not part of this agreement. Ironically, the defeated Carthaginians in their allies, the Elymians seem to have enjoyed comparably more peaceful existence after the Battle of Himera until 415 BC. Selenus versus Segastar Greek Selenus and Elymian Segastar share a long history of trade and conflict. The cities were trading partners and had a close enough relationship to have passed laws allowing intermarriage between citizens. There had been conflicts as well. The Phoenicians had aided the Elymians to beat back the Greek invasions of 580 and 510 BC of Lilybium and Eryx. It is unknown what role Segastar played in the war where Carthage destroyed Manoa. Segastar was neutral. During the First Battle of Himera, the period following Himera was one of prosperity for both cities. 
Around 454 BC, a conflict involving Motia, Segastar, Selenus and Acragus took place. Details are confusing except that Carthage was not involved. Selenus won a victory and the Elymians had appealed for aid from Athens without any known results. After a peace lasting almost three decades, Segestan power seemed to have weakened and Selenus opened hostilities in 416 BC. Athlenian expedition The Greeks of Selenus crossed the upper reaches of the river Mazaros and occupied some disputed lands on the border of Segestan, domain and started to raid Segestan territory. Segastar requested the Greeks to stop, and when this was not heeded, they managed to recapture the lands. But the Greeks defeated them in a later battle. Segastar then requested Acragus and Syracuse to intervene in vain. In fact, Syracuse joined Selenus and sent a fleet to blockade the Elymian coast. In desperation, Segastar sent an embassy to Carthage, but the Carthaginians refused any aid. Segastar had allied with Athens in 426 BC when they had intervened in Sicily for the first time and an embassy was sent to Athens begging aid. The resultant Athenian invasion of Sicily during 415-413 BC was destroyed by a combined effort of Sicilian cities including Selenus and Syracuse. As an ally of Athens, the position of Segastar had become precarious. Renewed Essilinate aggression after the Athenian defeat, Selenus sought to expand her domain again. Her geographic position meant an expansion had to be against either Mochi to the west or Acragus to the east, or against Segastar to the north. Furthermore, Segastar was allied to an enemy power and conquering the Elymians would have given Selenus control of an area rivaling that of Syracuse in size and direct land access to the Tyrrhenian Sea, and direct trade route with the Etruscan and Massiliot markets. Selenus resumed hostilities in 410 BC, again reoccupying the disputed lands across the Segastar, fearing that any resistance would bring Syracuse into the fray against him, remained passive. But the Greeks continued to raid Segastar domain. Segastar now sent an embassy to Carthage begging protection. The Carthaginian response Carthage, during the 70 years following the Battle of Himera, had expanded her domain in Africa, explored new trade routes in the Atlantic coasts of Africa and Europe and had pacified Sardinia under the leadership of the Magonide dynasty, but had not intervened in Sicilian affairs, and Sicilian Greeks had also refrained from provoking her. By changing trade patterns and consolidating markets Carthage had by 430 BC amassed a huge hoard of gold and silver. The Greeks were aware of the growing power of Carthage, which is why Syracuse had contemplated requesting her aid against the Athenian invasion, while the Athenians actually requested Carthage for aid during the invasion. Carthage had denied aid to both, and also declined to help Segastar in 416 BC. The situation was different in 411 BC, when the Segastans renewed their plea. Reason for intervention Firstly, Segastar decided to submit to Carthage and become a dependent ally. This probably meant that Segastar would retain internal and commercial autonomy, but surrender control of foreign policy pay for any Punic garrison housed in Elymian territory, and perhaps pay tribute in return for Carthaginian protection. Secondly, one of the suffits of Carthage was Hannibal Mago, a member of the Magonide dynasty, and no lover of Greeks. From the Carthaginian perspective, probably three factors stood out. A victory of Selenus would mean a strong power in western Sicily capable of threatening Punic interests. Submission of Segastar would enlarge the Carthaginian domain, while any intervention risked a war with the mighty Syracuse. The Carthaginian Senate debated the matter at length, and the influence of Hannibal finally secured a verdict for accepting Segastan's submission to the Punic hegemony and lending aid to Segastar. Hannibal was authorized to aid Segastar by any means necessary. Shuttle diplomacy Hannibal was not influenced by his personal feelings while tackling his task. 
he sent an embassy to Selenis proposing they keep the disputed lands in exchange for a ceasefire with Segastar. This move gave Carthage some time to mobilize troops, as they had no standing army, and had it succeeded, it would have enlarged the Carthaginian domain, ensured Segastan security without war. The Carthaginian offer was debated in council, and Impidian, a citizen with ties to Carthage, strongly advocated acceptance of these terms to avoid a conflict with Carthage. The Greeks of Selenus chose to decline the Carthaginian offer. Hannibal next sent Carthaginian and Segastan envoys to Syracuse, with the proposition that they mediate in the dispute between Selenus and Segastar, calculating that Selenus would refuse arbitration and then Syracuse would decline to become further involved. When a Selenite embassy told the Syracusans that they should mediate in the matter, Syracusans replied that they would neither break their alliance with Selenus nor break the peace with Carthage. Carthage thus had a free hand to deal with Selenus without the fear of outright interference from Syracuse. Carthaginian diplomacy had managed to isolate Selenus for the time being. The expedition of 410 BC Carthage maintained no standing army. So Hannibal initially sent an army made of 5,000 African soldiers and 800 Italian mercenaries to Sicily, and stationed this force at Segetza, while the army of Selenus was plundering Segestan territory, and had scattered into small groups because of carelessness. The reinforced army of Segestar sallied forth, caught the scattered Essilinit soldiers by surprise inflicted almost 1,000 casualties on the Greeks and captured all the booty collected by them. Segastar was secure from Greek raids for the moment, as the Greeks retreated back to Selenus after this clobbering. Syracuse received a request for aid from Selenus after this fiasco, which was voted but nothing was done at this time. Segastar meanwhile, probably fearful of Syracuse and retaliation, appealed for further aid to Carthage.